My friends, we're going to derive the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation basically from scratch, and I hope you enjoyed the derivation. We're going to start off right away. So the definition of Gibbs free energy is equal to the enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. And from here, we're going to divide both sides by T. So we get G over T equals H over T minus S, the entropy. And now we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to temperature of the whole thing, both sides, so of G over T. And we're going to do this under constant pressure conditions. So we'll take the derivative with respect to temperature on the right-hand side as well, H over T minus the entropy. And all of this is under constant pressure conditions. We'll clean up this left-hand side a little bit. We'll just put this, this function, these variables that we're taking the derivative of, just put in the numerator. So that's G over T with respect to temperature under constant pressure. And this right-hand side, we can distribute the derivative into the brackets. So we have the partial derivative with respect to T of H over T here, minus the partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature. And all of this is under constant pressure. Can't forget that. Constant pressure here. Okay. Now we're going to work on this right-hand side a little bit. So we have two functions here. It's like H and one over T that we're taking the derivative of. It's like derivative of temperature of H and one over T and H times one over T. And to take the derivative of this, these two functions, we take, it's the product rule. So we take the derivative of the first one, which is the derivative uh, times the second one left alone. So the second one left alone, we'll say one over T is left alone. The derivative of the first one is partial H over partial T. And we're doing that under constant pressure conditions, plus the first one left alone, which is just H times the derivative of the other one. So that'd be the derivative of one over T. That'd be the derivative with respect to T of one over T. Again, holding holding pressure constant here. And this other, this last term here, we're just going to keep it along for the ride. Partial S over partial T, holding pressure constant. Okay, so this here is this part here. We just use the product rule. Now, from here, we're going to leave this term, 1 over T, partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature and the pressure constant. Uh, but we can we can take the derivative of one over T. That's just negative one over T squared. So this whole thing becomes negative H over T squared because there's an H here. And then this part, this derivative is negative one over T squared. And then minus the partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature over pressure. Now we need to work on this right-hand term because we have an entropy in here and we want it in terms of a variable that we can measure in the lab. So to do that, we're going to go way back to the first law, the differential form du equals dq plus dw. And we assume a reversible process dq equals TDS because this is the thermodynamic definition of entropy for a reversible process. DS is dq over T. And if we assume pressure volume work only, then DW is PDV here. So this is our DU. So we're going to use our definition of enthalpy. Enthalpy equals the internal energy plus pressure times volume. The differential form is DU plus PDV plus VDP. We're going to substitute this into here. There's going to be a lot of terms, but don't worry, things are going to cancel out. <laughs> so we'll solve for DU from this equation. We'll just transpose everything to the other side. So DU equals DH minus PDV minus VDP here. And we're going to substitute that into this equation, what DU is. So DU is DH minus PDV minus VDP, and all of that is equal to this stuff here, this TDS minus PDV. TDS minus PDV. Now there's a lot of terms here, but this negative PDV, that cancels out with this negative PDV, and we're left with DH equals TDS 
plus V D P. See these cancel, this, this term just goes to the other side here. Now we're going to divide everything by DT. So that by DT, this by DT, this by DT. If we assume constant pressure, we're left with partial H over partial T under constant pressure equals T. And now this is under constant pressure. Partial S, partial T, constant pressure. And this, this is under constant pressure. So this is zero. Notice that this partial term here, this partial term is the same as this partial term here. And we can substitute it in. So if we solve for this partial term, the partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant equals the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant times 1 over t. I'll just put it on this side here. Uh, see that? We just divided both sides by t to get this here. And now we can substitute that in to this expression. So I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. So 1 over t partial enthalpy H over partial T holding pressure constant uh, minus I'll move my negative sign out H over T squared minus 1 over T times the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant and these two terms are the same equal and opposite one is positive one is negative so they cancel out and we're left with negative h over t squared. Left hand side is the partial g over t with respect to temperature holding pressure constant. And this is our Gibbs Helmholtz energy. Gibbs Helmholtz equation. Delta g equals g2 minus g1 and uh, the change in enthalpy equals enthalpy 2 minus enthalpy 1. We can just use the analogy that the partial derivative of the change in Gibbs energy over temperature with respect to temperature holding pressure constant is equal to the negative change in enthalpy over the temperature squared. And this could be for a process, it could be for a reaction or whatnot. Uh, but this is be our, our differential form uh, of it. We can use an integrated form of this. So if we multiply both sides by dt, we get d delta g over t, this is all one thing, equals negative change in enthalpy over t squared uh, dt here. And we can take the integral of both sides from some initial, from the initial to final values. This is just like the integral of dx, right? The integral of dx is just x. This is from initial to final, it would be delta x. So this is just delta of delta g over t. The change in Gibbs free energy over temperature is equal to, now we'll assume that the change in enthalpy is constant, so that's an assumption here. And the integral of 1 over t squared is our friend, negative 1 over t. This is from the initial temperature to the final temperature and we'll expand this a little bit. So this is a change, so that's final minus initial. So it's the change in Gibbs free energy at the final temperature over the final temperature minus the change in Gibbs free energy of the initial temperature divided by the initial temperature equals uh, this. these two negatives. I'll just pull this negative out to make a positive. The change in enthalpy from one over final temperature minus one over the initial temperature. And we want to isolate the change in Gibbs free energy. We want to know what the change in Gibbs energy is at a new temperature. So we'll move this term over to the other side. So delta GF over T final equals the change in enthalpy times one over temperature final minus one over temperature initial. And all of that is plus the change in Gibbs energy initial over temperature initial. I'm going to make some more room here, right up over here. And finally, we want to solve for the change in Gibbs energy at T2. That's going to equal the change in enthalpy. We multiply both sides by the final temperature. So 1 over T final minus 1 over T initial. This is multiplied by Tf. Both terms are plus the change in Gibbs energy initially times temperature initially times the final temperature. 
and we're basically done. We can clean it up a little bit and I'll, I'll write it a little bit nicer. So we'll say the change in Gibbs energy at temperature two is equal to the change in enthalpy. And if we distribute this temperature in here to the brackets, final temperature, so that's a one minus temperature final over temperature initial plus a change in Gibbs energy. This is at temperature T1 times the final temperature over the initial temperature here. And this works for reactions. So this can be like, this is an R, the reaction Gibbs energy, the Gibbs Helmholtz equation right here. Uh, we derived it from scratch and then we even integrated it to use the more useful form. This is the form that you'll see in problems. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed it. That was quite the journey we went through. Uh, if you got some value from it, please give the video a like as it motivates me to make more and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.